The special bond between a grandparent and her grandchild is unique, less complicated than the parent-child relationship. Researchers scanned grandmother's brains while they looked at photos of their grandchildren, and what they saw gives new insight into this special intergenerational bond. Thank you so much for coming in today. Vicki Schumann is 69 years old. Vicki, we're going to be putting you in the MRI scanner, and you're going to be lying flat on your back. Schumann is not here to have anything personally assessed or diagnosed. Rather, she is part of an anthropological quest. We'll have a, a mirror over the top of your head, and you'll be able to see photographs of your grandson, Chase. Grandmothers have actually been um, kind of understudied, and um, so this was really the first time that anyone's been able to, to, to take a look at the grand maternal brain and understand uh, something about grand maternal brain function. Anthropologist and neuroscientist Jim Rilling and his team, Minwoo Lee and Amber Gonzalez, recruited 50 grandmothers, 26 white, 21 black, two Hispanic, and one biracial. Each had at least one grandchild between the ages of three and 12 years old. We asked them to provide us with photographs of their, their grandchild, the grandchild that they felt closest to emotionally, and also uh, photographs of the grandchild's same-sex parent, who in many cases would be their own biological child. Um, and then we brought them into the MRI scanner and we took pictures of their brain, of their brain function, while they viewed those pictures of both their grandchild um, and their, their uh, grandchild's same-sex parent. While in the MRI, the grandmother volunteers viewed these photos, along with photos of people they didn't know and various objects. And what was discovered gives incredible insight into this special intergenerational bond it comes down to empathy. When the grandmothers were viewing pictures of their grandchild, they particularly activated areas of the brain that have been implicated in emotional empathy. So being able to share the emotions of their grandchild, feeling their joy when they're happy, feeling their distress when they're sad. Um, whereas on the other hand, when they were viewing pictures of the grandchild's uh, same-sex parent, who, who was often, as I said, their own biological child, the focus of activation was more on areas that are involved in something called cognitive empathy, which is different from emotional empathy. So that's when you cognitively process what someone is thinking or feeling and why. You think of it at a more cognitive level. And so it suggests to us that the mental approach that these grandmothers take when they're engaging with their grandchild is different from the mental approach that they're taking when they engage with their own, their own biological child. The data may be telling us the grandmothers possess strong empathy for their grandchildren, feeling what they're feeling. And with the adult child, a desire to understand what they are thinking and feeling, but more from a cognitive rather than empathetic perspective. It was an epiphany to me that I was empathetic. I, I, I just knew I would, there was so much love there, and he's, he's, a, he's a good kid. 12-year-old Chase is one of Schumann's five grandchildren. I, I've told my children maybe more than once that I really love them, but I'm thinking I love my grandchildren even more. <laughs> they're, they're easier. They're, um, I, I don't have the worries of dealing with life, I can just um, deal with them. There's a well-known theory in anthropology called the grandmother hypothesis, and that posits that the reason why human females live for decades beyond menopause is specifically so that they can take care of their grandchild, grandchildren and improve the likelihood that they will survive. With grandparents living longer than ever, their impact on their grandchildren's lives can be profound. There's another factor at work here, the cute factor. They're cute, right? They have a big head, big eyes, you know, big forehead, short, stubby limbs. And so they may be programmed by evolution to, to tweak the grand maternal brain in a particular way that adults are not. Science may show what's happening in a grandmother's brain, but life shows what's happening in their hearts.
I mean, with that first grandchild, my heart just burst. I, it, was, it was wonderful. And all my friends are the same way. The new, the friends I have, they just have a new grandchild. And I say, you'll see, you'll, it's hard to describe, very hard to describe until you're a grandparent.